Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Jody Amen. I'm a doctor of social work. I'll tell you a little bit about me in a moment, but I wanted to tell you what you're going to get in this video because I hope you know this, but all of the self-care that you could do in the world is not going to solve the problems that you're facing in these schools. It is immense, overwhelming, astronomical. The, uh, the change in the kids that we're seeing and how that is reflected on how we're feeling. We have more responsibility when we feel more and more out of control, which is the definition of stress. So your burnout is not a failure to do enough self-care. I don't want you to think that because I want to validate you for all the beautiful things that you're doing and trying to do to take care of yourself and take care of everybody else in your life. Probably because you're a caregiver, probably you're last on your own list. And so we do want to change that. But there's no amount of self-care. Like you are not just failing at self-care here. You're not just failing at boundaries. You are having a regular human response to the intensity that is in our schools right now. Kids are having all kinds of emotional problems. And uh, the parents are struggling too because they're worried about their kids and they're having their own issues because all of them are having a regular human response to our world. But you're the one that's supposed to be taking care of everybody. So it's even it's even more intense exponentially for you. So I'm going to give you some tips in this video to help you think about how to support yourself so it, it's a little bit easier. And we do have to change what's going on so that we, because we can't sustain this forever. It's unbelievable, right? What's going on. So I see you. I'm so grateful for all the things that you do. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm working at, uh, working with educators to try to see what I, how I could help. Uh, one of the things I did is I created a compass. It's a SEL curriculum for, um, for to teach in health class, but it can be taught in any class. So it's a mental health unit, but it is actually a modality. So it will improve kids' emotional well-being. It's uh, it's called a wise intervention. That's the modality of the intervention. So it can be taught by teachers, but it'll help kids feel better. There's eight lesson plans. So you could check that out if you want. But in this video, this is for you. Whatever you teach, whatever age you teach, I know that it's overwhelming. And I see you. And, you know, some people are leaving the field because they just, they can't do it. And it's not like they can't hack it. No, it's like they are making the best decision for themselves to not sacrifice their own body, their own mind, their own spirituality, their own families. And you are choosing or trying to choose to stay as a teacher, maybe not, but I'm assuming since you're watching this, you're, you're staying, to, you, you want to stay. And you want to see if there is something that you could do. So I'm here to help support you in the meantime while we're trying to make the schools better. I'm also an author. I have two books here. You can see them back here. They're in blurry. Uh, Anxiety I'm So Done With You is a teen book. And You One Anxiety Zero is for all ages. I also uh, do a podcast called Therapist Mom. And uh, you could see me on, you could follow me on TikTok or YouTube for more tips for healing the brain and the body and the spirit. I speak mostly to Generation Z because they're struggling the most, right? The, the definition of Generation Z is that they've had smartphones since middle school. And this has really changed how they grew up. <clears throat> I do, if you want a little bit more on that, I do have information in my programs so you could get more on that. This video is about you. Okay, let's get into it. So I have four pillars of self-care. I want you to think about four pillars supporting the structure of your body, of your body, of your emotions, of your mental health, of your spiritual body, right? These are, we have a lot of bodies. So four pillars. The first pillar is respite. That's pretty obvious. You need to get enough rest. You need to have that time to recover. You need to be able to do something totally different than what you're doing all day. And um, to give your mind a time to rest from that efforting that you have to do as a teacher. So rest, time away, time doing something different, respite. The second pillar is acknowledgement. Now, when we're burnt out, the, the definition of stress, like I said, is when you have a lot of responsibility for something you have very little control over. 
being a teacher right now, it is stressful. So of course you're going to get burnout. Burnout is a, is a normal human reaction to our world. It doesn't mean that you can't, there's something wrong with you or you're weak or whatever. You are a sensitive soul or you wouldn't be in this caregiver role. You are in a helping professional for, uh, profession for a reason because you care. And usually people who make these choices are sensitive people. You feel the energy of people around you. So when people are overwhelmed, you feel it. In schools, you have the, the administration that's overwhelmed by what they have to do. The, the parents are overwhelmed, so they want to blame somebody. The kids are overwhelmed, they want to blame somebody. Everybody picks the teachers to blame. And you're doing so much, putting your own time, your own energy, your own money a lot of the time into these classrooms and don't get very appreciated. Acknowledgement. So the kids aren't going to acknowledge you. You might not even see the results of the effort you're making right? That, that that penny might not drop for them for years. The things that you're giving them, that the showing them to believe in themselves or be, build confidence or, or that somebody cares or they have these skills, they might not realize that till later. So you're not getting instant gratification for all of this work that you're doing. And if you're parents, you, you, it's, has, it happens too. You, you put all this effort in, you're trying to teach stuff. You might not see the results of that for years. So we need acknowledgement to stay on the path, to sustain ourselves. And so I suggest you do that with your colleagues. So get a group of colleagues or maybe your department or something or your grade level and start to meet every other week or once a month even <clears throat> so that you can share stories of when you've gone above and beyond and the rest of your team can acknowledge you. Do it informally in the hallway Make sure you're acknowledging everybody else and make sure that you're receiving acknowledgement explicitly. Talk about that we want this relationship where we can acknowledge each other because that's going to help all of us lift ourselves up and get invigorated and be more powerful. So if you did all this effort and you were invisible for it, it's hard to keep doing that. But if you did this effort and people were like, you're changing lives, like, how did you think about that? How did you come up with that idea? And that's an amazing idea. I'm going to take it. I'm going to use it. Oh my gosh, I used it. And look what happened. This kid, blah, 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 right? Deep acknowledgement invigorates us. It revitalizes us. It makes us feel so much lifted up. When efforting without being validated kind of has this feeling uh, exhausted, down, zapped out, yada, yada, yada. So always be acknowledging people and always, and, and have relationships with people who will acknowledge you. Tell them about the four pillars, have them watch this video, create a group or a, a couple or somebody that you could do that. Your spouse, maybe your siblings, somebody that you're willing to, to have that reciprocal relationship with. So respite, acknowledgement. And the third pillar is structure. So we are in survival mode so much, especially if you have parents of young kids and you have a full-time job, which overflows into your personal life like teaching does. They're, we're in survival mode, right? We kind of don't have time to create a structure to help us, but if we stopped and did that or had some time to do that, it would save us a lot of energy later. So structure means eating well, so your body feels good, uh, sleeping enough, uh, having some kind of movement to to stimulate, you know, your hormones and get yourself uh, feeling good, good for the brain. Um, something like I said, outside, something in your schedule, like outside what you do all day. Having things in place, having a place for different tasks. So if you had your plug to your laptop in a certain place, and that's where you put your laptop at night uh, or phone, and you didn't have to find your plug and it's anywhere you want, anywhere you go. And, and then it's never plugged in because you left it on the couch and it's all more energy. So you want to create a structure that supports you a lot of, uh, in a lot of these little ways. So you don't have to take energy doing that. It's kind of like how Steve Jobs wore the same, same outfit. Maybe you want to do menu planning for the whole week. So you don't have to think about it every night. It takes, it takes a lot of bandwidth to do those things. Structure also could mean setting limits. 
saying no, get on the no train, say no. You are doing a lot for a lot of people. And if you say yes to that one extra thing, you're sacrificing not just yourself and your time and your sleep, which you probably are. You're sacrificing all those other projects because you're spreading yourself thin. And so if you can't say no for yourself, try to say no for those other things that might help you and then get used to it. <laughs> if you're not used to saying no, get used to saying no, because you can't do it all and be successful. Maybe for a short term and maybe at a great sacrifice to your body and your mind. But if you're going adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline all day, and then you stop to rest, your mind's going to, like anxiety's going to come. That's high performance anxiety, right? Because you're functioning all day with this high adrenaline and you're using it to solve all the problems you have to do all day. And then you come home and it's time to relax and you get anxious. And you're like, why am I anxious now? Well, it's because you use your, 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 you use your adrenaline all day and then you come home and you're, it's time to relax. Override that with your mammalian brain. I have programs on anxiety if you want some help um, with anxiety, but you want to tell yourself that um, I know I'm going to go home and relax. I know my adrenaline is going to be high and I just have to give it a moment to relax because what we do is we sit there and we have anxiety. We're like, why do I have anxiety? Why am I anxious? And you know, it kind of, it perpetuates it. It gets us, we feel more helpless and it gets us more intense when we want to be like, okay, no, what that is. I've had adrenaline all day and I've used it and now I'm not using it. And so it's, you know, kind of looking for a problem and giving you all these anxious thoughts and then anxiety is going to come. Okay. Uh, so structure. So creating a structure so you don't have to hold it all yourself. Creating a structure with your schedule, getting things, getting a routine for some things. So your mind doesn't have to think about or plan that stuff. It's already in place as much as you can. Some stuff you can't have like that. But if there's some systems in place that'll support you and you're not holding it all, you're not reinventing the wheel every second of the day. Um, that could go for your lesson plans too. Like have a formula that you use to make lesson plans, reuse them, um, use them different ways, whatever you have to do to simplify, simplify. And so you're not re- inventing and re-coming up with something. All right, share, get with people, share lesson plans. Get my lesson plan um, if you do any SEL, social emotional learning. Okay, I think it's a, it's appropriate for, uh, my program Compass is appropriate for middle school and high school. All right, so we got three pillars so far. We got a tripod and now we need the fourth pillar pillar. The fourth pillar is celebration. So you want to make sure you're celebrating the things that you do do. We live in this deficit culture. And so we are constantly thinking of all the things that we're inadequate about, or we didn't get to, or we're, uh, that we, we haven't done what our deficits are. And we're so focused on what our deficits are. And that just zaps your energy. You have this long to-do list and you're just thinking about all the things you haven't done yet. And it's exhausting. It's like doing the same. It's like you're doing the job over and over and over. So you want to, when you get something done, celebrate that thing. Be like, wow, I did it. I'm a badass, you know. Um, celebrate that you did something. Whatever it is, empty the dishwasher. I don't care what it is. You made a phone call that you've been, it's been on your list for a while and you finally made the phone call. Like celebrate yourself because that's going to give you energy and invigoration for the next job and stay in the flow. Just do the next job instead of thinking about all the other stuff, right? We're in culture to have that deficit thinking and we could override it. It was taught to us in our Western culture, these high expectations that we have. Okay, so there you have it. There's the four pillars of self-care. You want to think about respite. You want to think about acknowledgement and getting a peer or somebody in your life that will reciprocate that for you. They could be in a different helping profession. They don't have to be a teacher. Structure, creating structure to support you so you don't have to hold it all. And then celebrating whatever you do, no matter how little it is you celebrate it because that's going to, it's it's like you're validating yourself, right? You're acknowledging yourself there. So the celebration is you acknowledging yourself and that validation is going to invigorate you and get you ready for the next thing. 
Okay, I also have a flyer for you. You'll see it in the download where it's about earth care, self care, and community care. Because I started to think about, you know, the individualism of self care and how we need more than that. We're social beings, we need more than self care. We really have to start thinking about how we take care of ourselves is not separate from how we take care of our families and communities and how we take care of the earth. Why are those things three separate things? These are reciprocal relationships, right? So earth care is, um, earth care is having a mutually beneficial relationship with the earth. So you do things for the earth and the earth supports you back. The earth already supports you, right? Gives us all our food, gives us something to stand on, um, gives us things that we can sit on. And um, I, our house is made out of things that the earth has given us. So we have warmth. So the earth is already supporting us, but there's also an energy field in in and around us and if you're empathic uh you feel the energy around and it feels like oh i gotta block it because it's really it's really intense and negative but what if you connected with the benevolent energy field that's bigger than all those human fears and stress that that you're feeling what if you connected with the field and the field held you so you don't have to have all that other stuff go through your body. The field will take it and transmute it. And so what if you woke up and <clears throat> thought about your ancestors or the ancestors of the land that you're on? Because a lot of us, uh, we're not, our ancestors were not from the land that we're on right now. And so what if you connected with the ancestors of the land, your own well ancestors, and try to people your life with their knowledges with their with their skills with their hopes and dreams and their prayers and in that way you could some you could make an offering or an intention in the morning you know intentional living so if you woke up and you made an intention what if you match that intention with setting pouring some tea out on the earth pouring a little water out on the earth or putting a little bit of fruit out there somewhere in the garden um, if you don't have access to outside, you could do that in a plant inside your house. But what if you made an offering to the earth for that day? So whatever intention you have for the day, what if you had a symbiotic relationship with the field around you, with the benevolent field around you? Would that support you? I argue that it will. It will support you so that it, it takes on that negative of the field and you don't have to hold it. It's not helping anybody for you to take that in anyway, right? It's about belief. So if you think, I'm just sensitive, I take all that stuff in. A lot of people stop there. They think that's the truth about them and that's there's something they can do about it. That belief actually allows that stuff to come into you. And so you want to believe that you could stop bringing that in if you want. I'm going to also link to, I have a couple of videos, a nervous system reset, which will be great for you as well. And also an energy um, uh, a bl blocking, like how to block energy in this for empaths. So I think you'll really like that as well. If this is resonating, go watch those videos. They're just on YouTube, <clears throat> but I'll, I'll, um, I'll link to them. Okay. So if you, <clears throat> If you believe that you don't have to take that in, is what I'm saying, then you could stop taking that in. If you believe that you could block it, that you could choose whether you take that in or not, you're overriding that, just allowing it all to come in. And that's how it starts. That's how it starts building that up and, and how to have that energy shield uh, around you. So I want you to think about earth care, community care. So we're social beings, so we need relationships, right? Sometimes we just wanna be a by yourself because we're with people all day. In this profession, you're with people all day and also you're isolated because you're giving all day, right? You're the only adult in the classroom sometimes and you're giving all day. That's, there is, that's better than being completely isolated, but it's still isolating, if that makes sense. And so you want to look at when you're, if with these handouts, I'll give you all kinds of examples of self-care, community care, and earth care to involve yourself in. So this is healing your brain and body and your spirit. 
how to have overall healing and wellness for yourself. You want to think about all these things as humans because we're social beings and we want to change the world. We need to change the world because it can't stay like this because this is overwhelming. So <clears throat> I give you all these examples and then I have a, you have a blank one. And in the blank one, you could assess where you're at. You have two blank ones. You could assess where you're at in one where are you? Where are you lacking? Where, um, what do you do now? And then on the second one, what would you like to do? How would you like to create self care structures around self care, right? You have to have a structure of self care, right? You have to have that habit. Or, uh, if you wanted to stretch every morning, you need to have a corner that has a mat. So you just go down and stretch. You don't net down any in that corner. Um, I am saying that because it's downstairs in my house, but I leave that out, right? So I created a structure to make it as easy as humanly possible for me to go down and stretch. I'm creating that structure, but it's a self-care structure, if that makes sense. Okay, so, and the second blank one, you're going to talk about what you want to do. What you want to do. And then hang that somewhere. Hang that somewhere. You don't have to do everything at once. You could just try one thing. You can maybe list them, like number them, which ones you want to start to integrate. Do one small thing until it integrates and then do another small thing until it integrates and then another small thing until it integrates. Don't try to change everything. You don't even have, you're, you're exhausted, <laughs> right? And sometimes you just have to do the easy things. If you're so down and immobilized, <clears throat> You just have to do some easy things to get yourself one more inch up so you could do the next thing. So I, again, I want you to know that I see you. Uh, I care about you. I know your job is beyond what I could imagine. Um, and, uh, and I don't want to leave you here. I don't want to leave these kids here. Uh, I'd love to help. I speak in school so you could invite me to your school to speak about how to create structures to help kids feel better how to think about their mental health right now so that in ways that'll help them get better because some of traditional ideas of mental health like that they see on tiktok or that they have learned in psychology class or health class up to this point really point to this medical model of mental health which is not helpful to them. It's not going to help move the needle and change them to feeling better. And so we need to do this kind of social emotional learning. And, um, and I, and I, so I consult with schools all around the country and I'd love to come to your school. All right. Again, I'm Dr. Jody. You could find me on all the socials at Dr. Jody, D-O-C-T-O-R-J-O-D-I. Thanks for watching.